Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Usually, I find that I'm pretty well-versed in what games are coming out and things, and we don't get surprised very often, but mm-hmm. when I saw this game, I really found that I knew nothing about on Her Majesty's service, the world of smog. Did you had you heard of this before, Gen Con? Nothing. Did you? Nope. And it's an impressive looking package too. So when it shows up on, when it shows up on a shelf, you go, "How did I miss this?" Right. Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't fly under the radar, right? It would it would seem. So what this is is it's, it takes place in a steampunkish world in the mm-hmm. late eighteen hundreds, where you are some sort of. Uh, trade trader who goes to the secret shadow market where you're buying and selling there and you got to get out you got to get the stuff you need and then get out of the shadow market or you'll be trapped there forever serving the dark one so a historical (laughs) simulation basically (laughs) what we're looking at here okay let me show you In this game, everything revolves around this board, and I mean that in a very literal way. The board itself, most of the pieces revolve. They actually come out of here, you'll see this says six, so you know, it goes in slot six. They have the starting configuration. But what matters is each player is going to sit on one of the four sides of the board, and the thing that's facing you is what matters. So, for example, here, this is facing me, and it's showing the brown gem uh, the metal gem and at two so that means I can buy and sell it for two but if this rotates now I have the fire gem that which I can buy or sell for three and there's different ones down here is a spot that the price of this artifact is going to change and sometimes the entire board rotates now what players are trying to do to win the game each player has a card And this shows the location that they are to escape the shadow market. They must be in that location. Then they have another card that shows they must have two yellows, a red, and a blue, whatever the combination is, to escape. And they must also have one of each of the four artifacts. Each of the artifacts, they're all the same on their side, so there's different artifacts. So if you have all four artifacts, the colors you need, and you're in that spot, you can escape. Now each player has a player board. And this player board, they have markers on them. And these markers are pretty cool. You can see like there's little uh, crystals in between the show. And you basically keep track of how many you have of each of the different things. That's what the board is for. Now, players also will be getting money over the course of the game. And they're going to be using that money to buy or sell. And on your turn, each turn, uh, each round of the game, on your turn, you have actions. Now, an action could be simply moving from one spot to another spot and you just can move adjacent to adjacent spots when you move over a foggy area here a cloud here you have to pay a coin and or one of your gems to do that you can also buy or sell gems when you buy or sell a gem you simply pay or receive the amount of money you'll then cover it up with one of these tokens and rotate so whenever you buy or sell you will cover it up with a gem and rotate it. If a gem's covering something up, you can't use it. Now you can spend an action to take one of those off. That's not a problem. You can buy or sell an artifact if you're on one of these. Same thing, putting the gems on and or rotating them. You can simply, if you're on a place, rotate it. If you're in the middle, you can rotate any of them and you also can draw special cards. Special cards you keep until you want to play them. These cards can only be played if you have the gems here. You don't need to spend the gems. You simply need to have them. So if I have a yellow and a red gem, I can rotate two tiles 90 degrees in any direction. Or perhaps this one here, I can move an opponent anywhere on the board for if I have a blue. Um, This one just gives me two coins. The next time I sell something, it gives me plus three coins. I have a free purchase. Um, I can steal a coin from each player. And there's many different things. This gives me an extra actions on my turn. And there's even one that lets you rotate the entire board 90 degrees in either direction. So you can have these cards and play them, get them, getting them from the middle. The middle is also a place where you can get a coin or two if you have nothing else to do on your turn. 
So basically, those are the actions that players are going to do on their turn until they win the game. There's free actions. Playing a special card is a free action. And there's also the Shadow Master. Now, this Shadow Master dude is here, and this Shadow Master is not a nice guy, but if you have him, he gives you an extra action. On your turn, if you want to, you can pay the Shadow Master. Put some money here. At the end of a round, whoever is given the Shadow Master the most money gets him. He gives you an extra action. At between each round, players will also always get a coin of income, but the player who has the Shadow Master, their income automatically goes to the Shadow Master, so they have to keep paying the Shadow Master. If this amount of money here to pay the Shadow Master ever gets to be five, it goes away. But once someone has the Shadow Master for several turns, it's going to be hard for someone else to want to spend money to take the Shadow Master away from them. And you can be stuck with the Shadow Master for a long time. The first two times things are bought on or sold on the board, these guys show up. There's four of them. There's, there's actually six total. You'll see there's two that we're not using in this game. These guys will show up on those tiles, and they just cause a special action on that tile. For example, this gentleman here. He's minus one to buy or plus one to sell on his tile. So he changes this tile. This guy here, when you leave this tile, you can go to any other tile. This guy here, you can't buy or sell on the tile he's on. This guy here, you can lose one coin if you start your turn on the tile that he is on. So two of them are going to be on the board at any time. At the end of each round, if the Shadow Master ever changes hands from one player to another, you remove the oldest one and add another one in that spot. So there's always going to be two of those guys floating around the board. And that's pretty much the game. There's a few other rules with the Shadow Master, but for the most part, you're just going to try to manipulate around until you get your stated goal, and then that person wins. Components. What yeah. thinkest thou? Boom. Yeah, really. Goodness gracious. <laughs> this game is... Well, it's par for the course, really, for Kuhlman. You're not at this point. Creepy factor is off the chart as well. <laughs> it is, it is. But um, this is the kind of game that looks like it came out 50 years ago and they just reprinted an heirloom version of it. Yeah. But except, except this is the first one and the game is brand new. But this has the look, the feel, the, the, just the, the air about it of an heirloom production of a game. You know, as we were playing this, you kept talking like, oh, this is kind of a creepy thing. It is. It is it's definitely very a strange creepy. creepy. Well, the thing, again, the thing feels like a game out of time. Yeah. If it brought this out and set it on the table and maybe didn't show you that it's got modern foiling techniques and such, you might look at it and go, when is this from? Yeah. Like, what what world did this right. come from? You know, it has that quality. Because in the back, 1889. <laughs> so, I, I think that's great. I, I think the look is very enchanting, I guess. Yeah, and I really like, I mean, even the fact those little pieces that you keep, Mark, have the little jewels in them. I mean, mm -hmm. they are like stunning pieces, almost to the point of overproduction sure. for what the game is. Because you're like, wow, miniatures, what do they do? Well, they just move them Nothing. around. Uh, <laughs> they just move around. They're, they're just a token, right? But the gameplay itself, um, we'll, we'll talk about the, 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 the dark one in a moment here. The, 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 shadow, oh, the shadow Master, I'm sorry. The shadow talking master. about the dark one? <laughs> Um, but the game itself, with the whole rotating and you have this action point allocation, yeah. you, and you move, what do you think of that? The whole buy and sell, buy low, sell high? Uh, that was probably the, the one puzzle-ish part of this, what amounts to a puzzle game, mm -hmm. uh, in the whole thing. Because you only the, the amount that's facing you is what matters... But sometimes that amount's covered up, so you have to go over and, and remind yourself what is there. Do I want to take the time to take that uh, um, little token off of there so that now I can use that ability? Or is it a four and I need to buy something? Uh, I can't do it. i got to find something else. And then, you know, going. do I spend the time to go to the center so that next turn I can rotate something for free? You know, those kind of things and get a card. Those are all things that... that enter into your mind at the same time and it's almost overload but it's not quite there's huh. just a lot of stuff to keep it challenging um and your mind is constantly engaged in the game and that's what i enjoyed about i'll it. agree with that i think your, your mind is definitely constantly engaged when i first look at the whole package and started to understand what the game was as it was being explained i thought oh it's a puzzle game yeah and then i was like awesome because i love puzzle games Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a genre that I gravitate towards, and I find those games extremely engaging, and this is no different. I thought the puzzle presented here is a is a fun one. It's a unique mm -hmm. one. 
It gives you tough choices with your limited number of actions. It makes you consider that you could do something faster at the expense of money, which is a, a prized resource. Yes. And so I think the puzzle in the game is, is really good. It's a, it's a great puzzle game. Yeah, I usually don't like puzzle games. My concern here is that people are going to look at this cover, they are going to look at this amazing looking box, and expect a game that this is nowhere near. Right. One thing I like about the marketplace in and of itself mm -hmm. is the fact that it's more forgiving than many games of this ilk are. Mm -hmm. In the sense that if I want to sell a red blood gem for whatever reason, and Sam has just rotated or cut it off, I can still get to that spot. I can still sell that gem. It might take me more turns, but I can do it. Yes. And there's multiple, there's uh, uh, eight different of those spinning ones that sell the different jewels. So I can move, maybe there's another one that's open. Yeah. And I thought that was cool. And, and then the special cards help you get almost powers because... That, that you can use them and you don't even spend the jewels to get those. It's but. interesting that you say that though because uh, and use it as support for that it's forgiving because time is the one thing that is of the essence in this game. You're well, no, I agree on that, but first, so if you have to take longer to do something uh, that of what I just did, that means you're behind. Right. So it is kind of unforgiving in that respect, but I think I see what you're saying. There's ways for you to work around that. Whereas in other games, if you're behind, you're kind of behind. Well, it's, it's not the kind of game where if you didn't do something first, you can't do it. Right. You can do it. Yeah. But yes, at the expense of time. Might. It's going to take longer for you to do that. Right, right. The Shadow Master. Now, when I went over the rules, I, I, I neglected to say the Shadow Master has the ability to move those two guys on the board. He can move them. He can move them extra spaces by getting rid of some of the gems that are covering up spots. Mm -hmm. And the sh whole Shadow Master thing is... Such a unique thing. I've never seen anything like in other games mm -hmm. where you're paying him. Okay, so you're, it's kind of a bid to get him. Once you get him, you're like, yeah, extra action. You will still give me money. But, yeah, right. So you're, you you lose like, that coin you get every turn, which is not nothing, right? Right, right. And you're and kind you of sort stuck of work with this for guy. For a while. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because he, you use his power... And he sort of uses you. It's like, it's a very strange sort of symbiotic relationship with this. I mean, it's just a token, but it, it, makes, <laughs> oh, you token. Feel, it makes you feel like you are in this relationship. You wish sometimes you could just cut off a little early. Right. But, but you but, can't. But you keep getting hooked, right? And unless somebody buys you out from his influence early, by the time a few tokens have shown up, you know, before the, the five coin reset... Probably no one's going to outbid you. you. You're stuck with them for a while. Yeah. That's a plus, yeah. but you're also hurting for money. Right. But I think that actually makes this game you different, right? Oh, it does. Other than that, it way. would just be a whole move around and buy so low, so high. Right. Yeah. yeah. That guy being there changes the game. And I'm sitting there watching Z, you know, under the influence of this guy. I'm like, ah ha. But man, I want that guy for myself. So I'm just going to wait till the right moment. Then I take the guy and then I'm stuck with him. <laughs> It's yeah. such an odd thing. Yeah. It's, it's a great, it's a great design of this one piece and the way it operates in the game. Really, really smart. So overall, I think the production is the production is an eleven out of ten. Okay, I mean it's really that good. And like Z said, some people might think it's different. I have to be careful that the production itself for me doesn't make me rate the game higher than it, I should. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently giving this one. Um, Mechanical thumb up, all right? I think it's a good, solid Euro game. I don't know that it's great. The components make me like, oh, it is great. But if I unfocus off those, it's a decent game. It's fun. There's some interesting things about it. I don't know how often I would want to play it, but I think it's a good, solid game. The components elevated even higher. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. one, one, one thumb up for me. I'm, I'm going to go with this. Uh, let me provide uh, my frame of mind, though. If somebody says, let's play a puzzle game, my initial thought is, no. I'm going to find something else to play. Because I'm That's not a, a really puzzle calm game way player. That's a what he thinks. <laughs> but if somebody says, let's play a puzzle game and then plops this on the table, I'm in. So the components do sway you also. Not necessarily just the components. It's the theme. Uh, I love how the board works together. Oh, the how, gears and all. The gears all work. And, and I enjoy that. That's, that's something that is... I like the different ways that you can win, how that's going to change from time to time. Sometimes you're going to have to be in a different spot. You're going to need a different combination of gems, all of that kind of thing. So that changes as well. 
So if somebody says, let's play a puzzle game, I'm good. Somebody says, let's play this puzzle game, let's go for it. So with that, with that caveat being there, I'm going to give this uh, two dudes, creepy dudes sitting in a chair smoking a pipe. Um, way up. Lizards. Lizard men. Lizard, or what is that dude? That dude's like a... <laughs> that's the dude, that's the bad dude from Hellboy that, uh, like... <laughs> No, this guy. I, this Sad guy. Dude, yeah. This yeah, guy yeah. speaks yeah. to the dead, um, but he has to cover his face because the spirits are so vengeful. Yeah, that's and that right. They would find right. him and kill him. So this has, this has some really weird backstories. So in anyway, it. with that caveat, it's usually not the kind of game that I want to play, but this will. I, I want to play this puzzle game. Cool. I um, I'm a big fan of puzzles, like I said, and I have no issue whatsoever allowing a game that was. A stunningly made game, well produced, swaying what I think of it. That's part of the game. If this game was made on thin paper and was really ugly and had a boring theme, I'd like it less. I don't. I don't need to distinguish those two things. Okay, the, thanks for shooting me that. But no, no, that's your own opinion. I'm saying my opinion. I, I I'll help you up out of the bus. I, 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 I merge those things. Is what I'm saying. Um, I'm gonna. Be mirroring a lot of what Sam said. Love the theme, love the feel, love the look. For me, two well-oiled gears up. There you go. All right, so that is on Her Majesty's service, the world of smog. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>